This is Nick, and he has selective mutism. It all started long ago when he was a kid. My name's Nick, I'm 24 years old, and I have had selective mutism. If you don't know what selective mutism is, it's when a certain individual chooses who they want to talk to. So for example, when I was a kid, I uh, only, I didn't talk to parents or teachers, and in this video, I want to talk about my life with selective mutism, how people with selective mutism can cope with it, and how people that know who people, others that have selective mutism, how they can help them in the future. So this is my life with selective mutism. So I had selective mutism pretty much my whole life. I'm 24 years old and I'm now starting to get out of it. And when I was young, a lot of people thought I was depressed. And no, I was not depressed. Nope, not so ever because I keep a positive mind. I'm always positive. And, but that doesn't mean that other people with this condition might be. It could possibly be happening. But for me, I was, I was always the cheerful dude, but, you know, because of this, that could have been an assumption for some, but I wasn't depressed. Even though I didn't really talk, I still played sports in and out of school. Uh, I still had that, like, communication with kids, even though I didn't talk to adults. I still had fun with kids around my age, and I don't know when this started, it just all of a sudden started this kind of symptom of mine, but uh, it, it was around the first grade. I don't know why it happened, it just did, and it just stuck with me. And around like the third grade, when others were asked to read when I was picked, I always had to shoot, like show where everyone was so, uh, so I could look like I'm just being caught up or stuff uh, and in fifth grade I started like uh, my mom I was reading to her and she was hiding a recorder like underneath the table and I was being recorded uh, reading books and later I found out and I was okay with it also in fifth grade my teacher who was pretty cool but she handed out 50 bucks saying if I could read this one word off of this one magazine we were reading in class. She'd give me 50 bucks. And uh, I didn't do it. A lot of my uh, friends from school were just like, why didn't you, why didn't you? I don't know, I just didn't. They kind of bugged me for a little bit, but it was all cool. When I was in sixth grade, the teachers decided to give me this portable wash board thing so I can write down questions and answers and all that and just communicate a little bit more. But I'll say the good thing about being in a school from preschool to eighth grade was a lot of people knew me, a lot of people knew my parents, so we kind of had an understanding of, of me and they kind of coped with me and kind of helped me a little bit as well. And I was also picked on starting in sixth grade a little bit, but not too much. It was just little jabs here and there, always being the person it for a keep away. And in seventh grade, there was this spelling bee. You know, I was still on that chalkboard, washboard thing, the erase board. And for my grade, I was part of the few that got in and then faced the rest of the school. And I did not want to go to school that day because it, it, it was embarrassing a little bit. Like, oh, this guy that doesn't talk has to use this little board thing to spell out his words. And right away, I just wanted to get out of there, so I just made up some random word and pitched right out. And in seventh grade, 
that's when I was also asked to mouth out words instead of even though I still use the portable erase board, I was still mouthing out words. When I was going to high school, I'm like, I was thinking to myself, maybe I should just start talking a little bit. And homeroom or freshman orientation, they were, uh, my homeroom teacher was calling out everyone's name. I'm, I was like beating a little, my heart was beating a little bit because I'm just, because at that moment I'm like, I probably should just start. And you know, I'm like, yeah, I'm here. And since then, I started talking in high school, started talking to teachers. I was still a little shy, I guess, but it was it was still a good going process. And high school wasn't that bad. Like I knew people, it was a small high school, so everyone knew me, I knew everyone, and uh, nothing really crazy happened. Just at that time, I was still trying to like recover and just doing my best to get out of what was going through me in grade school. And I was just trying to talk more and everything. And then in college, I was pretty normal, a normal kid. I was talking to everybody. I was more outgoing. And even at the you know, uh, university that I went to after the community college, I took on more roles. And I had to like, communicate with a lot more people around the school and be more adult-like, I guess. So that was a good experience for me to open up a little bit more because now that I'm a graduate, I'm out in the real world trying to get my life together. So it's it's been a crazy uh, life so far. The reason why I chose to do this video is because I'm 24 and I still don't talk to some people and I have a degree in film so I'm like I might as well use the best of my abilities to kind of just spread this information outward and I know for some people that I don't talk to who are watching this I'm probably somewhere right, right now just like oh my gosh what am I why did I make this video it's gonna be a little bit embarrassing at first uh, after this video for some people I'm gonna feel a little shaken a little bit but it's for the better I guess so there were a few things that I have learned throughout this whole process of selective mutism one being I'm more aware of my surroundings like I think before I act. So before I say something, I'm always thinking in my head situations and scenarios of how to deal with a lot of things. So I'm more of a problem solver in a way because I'm always just thinking of the best solutions. And I think I, I'm acting this way is because I might select mutism because I didn't really talk that much anyway. So. I've always had things in my head when I was young, but I couldn't really say it because of just my situation. But And now it's like, I've just grown into that to where I'm always just thinking in my head before I say something, just to make sure that everything is pretty good in terms of situations and scenarios that, that go around. And I'm also more aware of other people's feelings because I can kind of put myself in other people's shoes a little bit because you know I've been there I've been to like you know, awkward situations maybe even some bad situations with bullying a little bit and I just I have a, a little bit of a connection and caring tone to me because I know how other people might feel in, in, in situations and I just I have more of a caringness to me a little bit and I think the best way for someone with selective mutism to kind of spread out is to do more activities to do new activities kind of find people that you're comfortable with and just interact with them 
because then over time you'll probably interact with other people in different groups and then others and others and just expand a little bit more and you'll get more comfortable with a lot of more activities and even though I'm getting out of this uh, symptom I'm still kind of battling and still kind of fighting and still going through all this and still improving myself to get better and to be more outspoken because that's still like a big thing with me. It's not really that outspoken that much, but I still want to be. So I'm still in the learning process, even though I'm still like recovering from all this. way I can explain selective mutism in terms of my experience and my point of view is that uh, at certain points in my life I wanted to talk but I felt like my brain didn't want me to and it sounds silly but that's how I felt like it was because I wanted to there was moments where I just wanted to say something but it's either because I didn't want people to make a, a big deal out of it, which was some reason, sometimes, but I just, I felt like my brain just didn't want me to talk sometimes either. And I'm not an expert at this, this is just my personal view and opinion and just from what I've been going through for my whole life and that's why I wanted to make this video was just because it gives just an explanation from someone's point of view on this symptom. Even though it's not a big symptom, it's, it's still something and it could be somebody right now that has it. You could change the world but they can't because of this and once they kind of get out of it, who knows what could happen. Uh, but I'd say most importantly is just go to a doctor for someone that has this uh, because that's the best way and if you want to do this take little steps don't force the person to talk that's just gonna make them not want to talk know when they're ready to talk too because you just don't want to push them you gotta push a little bit but not too much if that makes any sense but you got to know when they're kind of comfortable a little bit and they want to talk but they just don't feel comfortable to but they want to kind of situations but again most importantly just find somebody to help you that's a professional because that will help tremendously and I hope Others have taken in this video a little bit from what I've gone through, like the recorders, the erase boards, the mouthing out words. You know, if somebody has that, those are good stuff to take because I'm kind of over it. And, I, and this has just been my life and I just want to get it out and done and over. So that's all I have to say. If you found this video interesting, please pass it along to people that have selective mutism or others that are going through this process, like families. And maybe people that have social anxiety, they can learn a lot from this too. So, my name's Nick Beletsky, and I had selective mutism. That's all I have to say.